Hello, my name is Adrian Catherwood. Many years ago, on the 31st of October, 1959, I was the first announcer on Ulster Television. I told everyone about the programmes they could see. After being an announcer for some years, I did programmes where I presented women's issues and also several children's programmes, one of which was called Romper Room. Now, all these years later, I'm delighted to be here on NV TV to introduce tonight the Jerry Kelly Show. Movie House Cinemas, proud sponsors of Tonight with Jerry Kelly. Treat yourself to a movie. Relax in VIP recliner seating without the VIP price tag at Cityside, Glen Gormley, Macarra, and Coleraine. Enjoy the show. Welcome your host, Jerry Kelly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello. Welcome to this, the final programme of Tonight with Jerry Kelly, which uh, we've been bringing to you for the past eight weeks or so from the E3 studios here at the Belfast Metropolitan College. As you know, it's been a, a brilliant collaboration between former colleagues of mine at UTV and the media students here at the college. More of that later, but uh, with just over a week or so to go to the big day, we thought we'd start the show with something festive. And what could be more festive than a pantomime? So from this year's show at the Grand Opera House, which is Cinderella, would you please welcome Prince Charming, played by Connor Headley. <laughs> Harry Jenkins, who plays Brian Hardup. <laughs> and the lady herself, Mae McFetridge, the fairy godmother. Come in, mate. Very come in, come in, come in. Yeah, back spot. I'm waiting on a claim. The back spot. What uh, happened? Actually, have you have you got two weeks to attend? It's that bad, though, isn't oh, it? Oh, stop your talking. Can I tell you what, mate? No, mean stop your talking. <laughs> <laughs> is this just one of the beautiful costumes that you have? Yes, this is the. This is my entrance. Well, it will probably be the only one because I'm the fairy godmother. And uh, you can't go like changing every. Two minutes and another costume. But at the finale, no, that means the end. Yeah. See, at the finale, yes. they probably get me a big, well, a big silver one. Right. How, uh, many, uh, how, uh, how, many, how many of these have you done? Um, Cinderella or Pantos? <laughs> Pantos. I think this is my 32nd party, isn't it? Yes. 32. 32. Record breaking. A record Absolutely. Breaking. Um, Looking at busts, there is one of you in the opera house, isn't there? And I've got the old one here. <laughs> I'm pulling the back out of me. I feel sorry for the wee women, especially them two at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Patty, Barrett hard up. What's, what's your role in this? Are you, do you look after the fairy godmother or what? All the, every year, Jerry, just to have, pull her off a, a star or whatever she's flying in yes. on, a horse carriage, whatever it is, and as you see, she said you know, she can't uh, even get up the stairs. No. Not at all. So. She's very good to me. Uh, 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 do you know something, folks? It's expected that 75,000 people will see this pantomime this year. 75,000. I know. I tell you, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Isn't it? All them people coming just to see us. Yeah. But well, sure, it gets them a night out, doesn't well, it? Well, that's guys? very true. Are you enjoying it, May? I'm delighted with it. It's going very, very well. And this young fella here, he's just gorgeous, isn't he? Isn't he? I'd be all over him like a, uh, a, <laughs> like a cheap suit. <laughs> Funny enough. <laughs> <laughs> What's that guy? Connor, <laughs> lovely to see you. Lovely to see you too. You're from Lurgan. I am indeed, I. And is this your first panto? Yes, it is my first, first big gig since coming back from drama school in London, so. Oh, you're a drop? Ooh, Ooh, stop, your <laughs> stop your talk. Stop your talk. My first big gig. Uh, uh, <laughs> and your, your 
a singer as well. I am indeed, yes. So, machine. <laughs> Stitcher. It's only singer in our house. It's a so machine. <laughs> Uh, what, can I excuse me? Can I talk to Prince Charming? Uh, yeah, you work away there, so. <laughs> and your role, you get Cinderella at the end. I do, yes. Yes. Who's playing Cinderella? Uh, it's a girl called Kaya Paris Walcott playing Cinderella. She was Goldilocks last year in the Pantomime. Oh, as well. yes, She's yes, back yes, this year. yes, yes. I guess she, she forgot something in her day. <laughs> she come over to get it. You know, just made his way. Harry, up. are you allowed to speak at all in this triumvirate? Only when I get on stage. When <laughs> Harry, she, hold on, I take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, what about singing a song for us now? Would we like that? Would we like uh, Connor to sing a song? Oh, what, what, what would you sing for us, Connor? I'm going to be singing 10 minutes ago from Cinderella. No, no, could you do it now? Oh, yes, I did. I did a joke there. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, no, probably did. It's called 10 minutes ago. Yes. Right, but you, uh, is this from the panto? No, it's not from the panto. But oh, you've just decided just to sing any old song at all. Like <laughs> may as well. So we thought with this whole theme of pantomime, I'll just sing uh, any old anything. song whatsoever. 10 minutes ago, what's it from? It's from Cinderella, the Rogers and Hammerstein musical. Ah, there you go. Will you sing it for us? Uh, yes, no make, worries. Make your way across. Give Connor a ring. He's going to be great. Well done, son. Hey, good looking young fellow, isn't he? He's been going. Ten minutes ago I saw you I looked up when you came through the door My head started reeling You gave me the feeling The room had no ceiling or floor Ten minutes ago I met you And we murmured our how do you do I wanted to ring out the bells and fling out my arms and to sing out the news. I have found her, she's an angel with the dust of the stars in her eyes. We are dancing, we are flying, and she's taking me back to the skies. In the arms of my love, I'm flying over mountain and meadow and glen And I like it so well that for all I can tell I may never come down again I may never come down to earth again Ten minutes ago I saw you I looked up when you came through the door my head started reeling, you gave me the feeling The room had no ceiling or floor Ten minutes ago I met you And we murmured our how do you do's I wanted to ring out the bells And fling out my arms and to sing out the news I have found her, she's an angel with the dust of the stars in her eyes We are dancing, we are flying And she's taking me back to the skies In the arms of my love I'm flying Over mountain and meadow and glen And I like it so well that for all I can tell I may never come down again I may never come down to earth again. Good or what? Good or what? Superb. Isn't he? What a, oh. what a, what a great singer. Yeah. This is your, what, fourth, fifth, sixth time doing Cinderella? Six. Yeah, four or five. First time I did it was played Buttons. That was hard long ago. You were Buttons then. Goodness. Do you change it every year? Is it, is it the same? Is it very formulaic? Or do you add your own twist and all to it as, as the years go on? <laughs> well, it's just... It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> on, the, on the first two nights, no, we stick rigidly to, to the, script. the script. Once we get two weeks in, then the madness right, kicks right. in. And it just, you know, it's the same story every year, yes. you know. Yes. 
he gets hurt with the, the big ball and the, taking all the stuff. But um, yeah, the stuff leading up to it, you know, is uh, it's different, isn't it? Would you would you would you ad lib at all, me? Would you? Me? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm at. <laughs> Just, and I, I really, really love it. You know, if you're you're on there. And it's my lane, I just forget, you know, and I just go sailing. And the guy beside me or the girl beside me. Usually, spent, usually uh, English. You, English, no, normally <laughs> English, and I would go. <laughs> English. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll go up and say, It was your lane. I says, I know that, you know that, but they didn't know that. <laughs> so for some of you, sir, you see me going blank, you know, it's her fault. <laughs> what, <laughs> or what, what is the appeal? Because. Adults love it every bit as much as children love it. See, there's stuff, there's stuff me and Paddy would do, and kids are laughing at, you know, all the pranks and all the, the funny bits. Like, and then there's stuff that, you know, you would... It's like, for instance, you know, the, 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 I have a cousin in this pantomime, and her name is Roisin O'Reilly, and she runs a, a, a retail reptile shop in Randallstown. And she's got two poisonous pythons hissing in a pit. Yes. So the kids love all that. Say that rather quickly for me. No. <laughs> Roisin O'Reilly from Ronaldstown has a raptail shop. And she's two... Raptail two, A raptail, <laughs> a raptor shop. And she's got two poisonous pythons hissing in a pit. <laughs> <laughs> so the kids... So the, the kids, kids the love kids all the, ki the kids yeah. all love it. It's like it's the, like the old you know, one smart fella he smart, fell smart you know and, and when you were a kid. But then yeah. the older the the, the the stuff for the older ones that the that, that the kids don't get you know say it's over uh, their heads but yeah the other yeah so the so the prince would come on and say how many tickets do you want for the pantomime or for the sorry for the for the ball and I'd say well I'll take four. One for me, two for the stepsisters, and one for my daughter. Sure, hold on, I'll go and get her, and you can give her one yourself. <laughs> Sorry, cut, maybe cut, cut that, that line. Out. Out. <laughs> but the kids will go. You just are going to get one for her, and I've seen her. <laughs> Sniper wouldn't take her. <laughs> How many shows are you actually doing on this run altogether? Seventy-five. Seventy-five. And you're running right through now until the 15th of January. Uh -huh. So how many is that a week? Is that like many? Twelve. Twelve. Wow. -y. For six and three fifths weeks or so. <laughs> what happened, May, if, if God forbid something should happen to you? Have you got a stand in? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it, this is 32nd year or something. Yeah. And I, I haven't missed one yet, like a, even a scene yet. I nearly missed one last year. Because the, the girl who was dressing me didn't appear. So I had to get the fella who's doing buttons this year. He was there and he, he changed me because it's impossible to take these on and off. You know what I mean? And last year I had nine changes. Take what off? You know, the, my, the, What's the thing you said? These? This? Aye. <laughs> take everything off. <laughs> They're not easy. Today my back's broke. You know what I mean? You know, you, some of the girls know what I'm talking about. You know, see when you're, it's, it's, it's terrible. I'll take your word for it. All right. Paddy, John, yeah. May. <laughs> yeah. They'll cut that out. They will cut that out. No, they won't. Thanks a million. Uh, good luck with the rest of the run. Thanks a million. Very happy. Do you get Christmas, Christmas Day off at least? Christmas Day off. That's yeah. it. That's it. No, no, it. More over. We'll see you after. Different stars. Thanks a million. Ladies and gentlemen, May, Thank Paddy you. Jenkins. Thank you. There are, uh, there are other pantomimes, of course, it's not just the only one. You have discovered there's pantomimes in Cumber, Coleraine, Newton Ards, Armagh, Lurgan, Balamina, Dungan. So you're not the only ones. There's pa there are pantos, yes, there are pantos. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're going to take some more music now, and I know you're going to love this next act. They are Catherine Hamilton and Zoline Maybury, and they're friends from the Larne area. And they perform under the name Accorda. Catherine is a trained soprano and a harpist, and Zoline is a guitarist, and she's a singer who loves 60s and 70s classics. Together, they're something very special indeed. So with a bit of a fun song, this is a mashup of Santa Claus is Coming to Town and I Want a, hop -a, -pop a Hippopotamus for Christmas. <laughs> Would you please welcome Accorda.
what a miss will do. I don't want a doll, no dinky tinker toy. I want a hippopotamus to play with and enjoy. I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. I don't think Santa Claus will mind you. He won't have to use a dirty chimney flue. Just bring him through the front door, that's the easy thing to do. I can see me now on Christmas morning, creeping down the stairs. Oh, what a joy and a surprise when I open up my eyes to see my hippo hero standing there. He's making a list, he's checking it twice, he's gone by. Just brilliant, just brilliant. Uh, the girls will be back throughout the programme. They're going to sing a few more songs for us. But at this moment in time, we're going to take a break. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. See you then. Hello, my name is Ellie Mikhailova, and I'm doing my second year in creative media production and factual television. In today's show, I'm working as a camera operator, and I hope to work in the TV and film industry in the near future. Ready for an epic family day out? Then head over to the Jet Centre. Explore the excitement of Alley Cat Soft Play. Slide into action with hours of fun while also getting time for a coffee break. Arcade more your thing, say no more. Play games and win tickets. Feeling competitive? There's a game for everyone. Become gem mining experts at the Jet Centre. See what gems, stones, arrowheads or fossils you'll discover. Golf more your thing? Practice your game on the North Coast with mini golf. Lots of fun to be had on this 18 hole outdoor mini golf course. Or join us for bowling or a movie. The Jet Centre. Entertainment for everyone. Visit Antrim Town Centre and the award winning Antrim Castle Gardens and make magical memories like never before. Embrace the giant Christmas spirit and experience the enchanted winter garden. Book your tickets at EnchantedWinterGarden.com Brought to you by Antrim and Newton Abbey Borough Council. of shows to enjoy at the Grand Opera House in 2023. From West End and Broadway musicals to thrilling drama and many more sensational productions. Book your tickets at goh.co.uk.
Nestled in the Castlereagh Hills, you'll find Hillmount Garden Centre. Whether you're looking for winter plants to brighten your garden, a real Christmas tree or new Christmas decorations, you'll find it at Hillmount. Those gifts for all the family and gift vouchers for that one friend who's so difficult to buy for. There's everything from barbecues to pizza ovens and garden furniture. And you can shop these online too at hillmount.co.uk. After all the shopping, stop in at the Gardener's Rest and relax with a warming cuppa or enjoy a festive feast. Hillmount Garden Centre, Upper Braniel Road, Belfast. <laughs> Christmas, as we know, means various things to various people. For many, it's a wonderful time of the year, full of festive magic, loving family gatherings, warmth and happiness, except for when it isn't. Very often, it's a time of extreme anxiety, of depression and money worries. It can be a time of stress, uncertainty and loneliness. And with the rising cost of living, the rising prices of even the most basic of foodstuffs, this year's so-called festive season could well be the hardest time of the year for many people. Well, with me now is a long-time volunteer of the Samaritans, Ken Bamford, and Pauline Brown, Regional Manager of St Vincent de Paul. Pauline, we don't want to frighten people, but this is going to be a tough time for many. It absolutely is, Jerry. Unfortunately, so many people are really struggling to make ends meet, just their day-to-day -day living. And for a lot of people, they are facing impossible choices. And it literally is making a difference between putting food on the table or actually heating their homes. And we've heard a lot about that in the news. Yeah. And unfortunately, Christmas is not the same for everyone as you have just described. So for us in St Vincent de Paul, we are seeing a huge increase in the number of people coming to us for so help. How could you, I know you work all year round, but how can you help specifically at Christmas time? Specifically at Christmas time, we believe that no child should waken up to an empty Christmas. And for us, we still want to promote the magic of Christmas. So really what we're asking our donors to do this year is to provide us with gift vouchers or to go online and donate for us because we want to give the gift of choice this Christmas. Yeah. We want to empower parents, we want to empower families to go and choose a gift for their own ch child and then obviously as well to make those considerations around providing the Christmas dinner and making sure every, every house is warm this Christmas as well. There are people, and it's becoming increasingly common, who don't even have a home. There will be people on the street this year. Is that yeah. becoming a more common problem? It seems to be a bit of a trend, unfortunately. And again, you know, there are all kinds of reasons why people are becoming homeless. And um, for some people, it is a life choice. And for others, it's just circumstances. Um, it can be addictions, it can be family circumstances, it can be a crisis that will force people into that situation as well. So I think one of our messages is that we don't want to see people struggle please lift the phone to us. We will help people wherever and however we can and that there is support there for everybody, no matter who you are or where you're from. You're talking about lifting the phone. Ken, that's exactly what you do. You answer those phone calls. We're there to listen. You're there to listen. How many phone calls? Is, is Christmas especially difficult for the Samaritans? Um, it's, every time is a challenge. And throughout across the, the organisation, we take a call for help every eight seconds. Every eight seconds? Every eight seconds. There is somebody look, asking for help. And they're asking, asking for somebody to listen. It's to what's going on in their life, whether it's, no matter what it might be, it's somebody to talk to. And listening can be, especially at Christmas time, whenever it brings back memories, all manner of thoughts and of past and, and, and un, uncertainty of the future. It's somebody to talk to and to, to share. But are these problems, are they horrendous problems? Are they small problems? They what? are everything that you could possibly imagine. Everything you could possibly imagine. Some of the things that Pauline has mentioned, it's isolation, loneliness, just to have nobody to talk to. And that is a, a frightening place to be. And certainly to have nobody to listen and it's, we all think sometimes, do we listen? You know, do we listen to, do we listen to understand or do we listen to reply? And that can be yes, a, yes, a yes, big challenge. Yes. And it's just that, 
fact of connection. And Christmas is all about connecting. And when there's nobody to connect to, that's when things become difficult. And we all have this image of Christmas. It's the perfect Christmas, mm -hmm. isn't it? We all want it to be absolutely perfect. We watch all the Christmas films that are on all day long. That's the type of Christmas we want. And very few people get a Christmas like that. Mm -hmm. That's right, Jerry. You know, it is such a difficult time for people. Um, and as I say, with the increased cost of living as well, this is really pushing people to the brink. And I think the sad reality is, is that there's one in four children living in poverty in Northern Ireland. By the time this winter is over, 75% of households will be living in fuel poverty. Yeah. Now that is a stark reality in 2022 um, that that is actually happening. So I think the more support, the likes of the Samaritans, other charities are out there and that's what we're here to do. We're here to provide that support. Um, there's no stigma attached with looking for support, but we would always say... People think there is. Yeah, we would always say, look, it takes a very brave person to lift the phone. It's not, a, it's not a weakness, it's a real sign of strength. And certainly, I know with Samaritans and with St Vincent de Paul, you will get that listening ear, you will get some empathy, you will get someone who understands your circumstances. And um, just don't be afraid to lift the phone, is yeah. my message, yeah. yeah. You deal too, Ken, with the big issue. Suicide is a major problem. I read a statistic that in, in 2020, there were 219 suicides in Northern Ireland. That's right. That is unbelievable. It is, it, is, it is scary. It is absolutely scary. And we all have the ability to be there for somebody. And, it's, and it is that time of um, perhaps somebody is in a dark place. But you can be in a dark place and look perfectly normal. Just look. But thoughts and stress and things are going through your mind about all manner of things can bring you into a place where what's the solution? I can't and I have nobody to search for that solution with. And when I have somebody to, to share, to share my feelings and be open about them and not talk to somebody who's not judging me, not telling me to wise up and pull yourself yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. Somebody who is there to, yeah, and once you explore your own feelings, you need to start to understand them. And then you maybe find a way through them. And perhaps it's, it's that darkness. And sometimes when you think of somebody in a very deep hole, do you throw a ladder down to them? Or do you get into the hole with them? And when somebody's in that place with, wow, you're not on your own. And I think that's the message that yeah, you're not on your own. There it's is something. It's the same message, mm -hmm. isn't it, in mm -hmm. St. Vincent de Paul? Absolutely. And in St. Vincent de Paul, we have a network of local volunteers. We're a member led organisation. Every town, every village in Northern Ireland, there are a group of St. Vincent de Paul members who are there and who are ready to help. And be that by providing vouchers to help you with the practical things, the food, the heat, the Christmas gifts. Um, anything like that at all, we will learn. We will help with the practical stuff, and certainly the Samaritans can help with and the on emotional the practical stuff. There, there will be families getting a voucher for heating. Some of those families don't actually need that money. They could easily give it over to St Vincent de Paul, couldn't they? Well, there's give. always that as well. I and always think that's a yeah, very practical one yeah. that you do if you don't actually need that money mm -hmm, to heat your house. Mm -hmm. You're operating on Christmas Day as well. We are, we are right through. We'll have volunteers, many volunteers, do a bit extra at Christmas. And when I say do a bit extra, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of divide the day up into, into small, a smaller shift. So because we're at home, we're enjoying them, giving something back. And that's what somebody said, what do you get from it? It's being part and being there for somebody. And that is such a reward to when somebody leaves the call in a better place when they came to the yes, call. That is a good call. On behalf of all the people that have phoned you and are going to phone you and who involve themselves as it thank you so much indeed. Can I wish you two a happy Christmas? Thank you thank very you, much. Jeremy. We thank Ken for calling. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Help if you can. Please do help if you can. Okay, we're going to take uh, another song from Accorda. Uh, this time we'll go for one of my favourites. This is Oh Holy Night.
my favourite of all of all the Christmas songs Oh Holy Night and Accord again will be back at the end of the programme for one more now back in 1976 Dean Sammy Crick started the tradition of sitting out in front of Belfast Cathedral collecting money from passers-by with all the money raised then being distributed to local charities Dean Crooks became known as the Black Santa and that 46 year old tradition of Black Santas that he started continues to this very day the current Dean Stephen Ford and Stephen will begin his fifth Black Santa sit out on Monday the 19th. He'll be on the steps of St Anne's Cathedral each day until Christmas Eve and I'm delighted to say that the Dean is with us now. <laughs> welcome Dean, welcome. Uh, getting ready for the big day, I see you've got all the gear on under getting these lights. Getting ready for the big day, of course uh, Donegal Street can be one of the coldest streets in Belfast <laughs> so you need to be well wrapped up to be uh, on the steps of St Anne's Cathedral. When you got the job as Dean, did you know this was part of the job description? Well, as you say, the tradition has been going for 46 years. So, yes, I had a fair idea that uh, <laughs> uh, the deed of Belfast was going to be Black Santa. And it's part of the job that I absolutely love. Uh, it's a tremendous way of, of meeting so many people. The, the, the crack, the conversations uh, are great uh, on the steps. But, of course, uh, what you're doing is raising money for so many uh, really important uh, charities and needs. You, you did one earlier this year, didn't you, at Easter times? We did uh, during the season of Lent. Uh, as the crisis unfolded in Ukraine, we did a special Black Santa uh, sit out for the people of Ukraine, those who were being made homeless uh, and those who were fleeing as refugees. Um, and there was a tremendous response to that. Uh, and we worked uh, with two partners, with Christian Aid and with Habitat for Humanity, who were working directly uh, both in Ukraine and in the surrounding countries for the millions of people uh, who escaped uh, the war and of course it's ongoing uh, for those people there. And are some of the, the some of the monies this year, are they going to go to refugees as well this time? Again this year, each year we have a particular focus uh, and this year our focus is both uh, charities in Northern Ireland who are working with those refugee communities who have come across. So some of the charities will be working uh, with uh, Ukrainian refugees, but also with refugees from other parts of the world, Syrian refugees who've been here for a number of years, uh, those who have been refugees from uh, Ethiopia or Sudan uh, or other places of war or conflict. Um, and we support them uh, in, in a whole range of ways. Yeah, I don't have to tell you because we've been listening to Pauline and we were listening to, to Sam earlier. This is going to be a tough time for people this year financially. It you're not going to get the monies that you would like to get this year, are you? Well, I would like to hope that we will. Uh, the generosity of the people of Northern Ireland, in a sense, knows no bounds. Uh, and although it is going to be tough, it's Black Santa in uh, the crisis of the cost of living. Uh, nevertheless, I think those uh, who have something uh, will give. And it's, 
it always amazes me, uh, even the small amounts that so many people bring. Very often there are children will come uh, and they'll be brought by their parents, maybe a father or, or a mother, uh, and those people will say, well, I was brought as a child by my parents uh, and now I'm bringing my children. So, so every uh, penny that is given, and sometimes it's, it's uh, jam jars and bags of pennies or five pence pieces, uh, those, those are brought. Uh, of course, nowadays uh, we have the ability to take cash or Oh, of course we uh, have. <laughs> uh, uh, and that can be uh, a, a tap or, or, and I do have to ask how many knots people want uh, when it's a credit card. I, I don't think my fingers have ever slipped, but uh, uh, the, people, people are incredibly generous. Do you have a target in mind? Well, each year uh, it, it's in a it range somewhere between 160 to 200,000 pounds, which really? is a tremendous sum of money. And uh, this year we're being a little bit more focused uh, in terms of perhaps a slightly smaller number of charities that we're supporting. We're focusing on those charities that have an, an income of £150,000 or less mm. uh, so that perhaps we can give a little bit more to those. And, and the impact that we make both to charities that uh, are supporting the refugees and also those. the other focus this year is the charities that are working uh, with people who are facing into the cost of living crisis. That might be uh, fishermen's families in Kilkeel or it could be people uh, in Cash uh, and it could be people across the city of yeah. Belfast. When do you decide who gets the money? Is that that's done much later in the new year? We do that after after the new year. While uh, everybody else is packing their Christmas tree away, uh, the Dean of Belfast and his team get together. We go through the charities that have applied uh, and we make the allocations. So then the money's all given away uh, on what we call Good Samaritan Sunday. And it's, it's a wonderful thing to be able to give £20,000 away in I one bet. afternoon I bet. I uh, bet. to... Yeah those who uh, will put it to really good use. Let's get down to the practicalities. What are you wearing underneath that? <laughs> uh, if I was a Scotsman, I would... Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't want to know. No, indeed. Uh, but uh, each year, actually, there's a particular lady in, in Newton Ards who always knits a special set of black Santa socks. Uh, wool to keep your feet warm as you're standing on the stones of uh, steps of the cathedral. Uh, and usually a body warmer as well to keep you right. warm. And uh, people, uh, also some of the, the local uh, cafe owners are very good. Uh, a hot uh, chocolate or a, a coffee keeps you warm when you're standing uh, on the steps. So look, I wish you well again this year. You'll be on the steps. There was a fire very near you last year, so the, the footfall may not be as... As good this year as it was before? Well, we hope the footfall will return. The uh, council has opened Donegal Street again. Uh, and, uh, of course, we have the university now uh, next door course, to us as yes. well. So uh, thousands of students. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we hope the footfall will, will return. It's, it's been difficult over the last two years. But, of course, we are online as well as in person. So www.belfastblacksanta.org. <laughs> Have we gone into the 21st century or have we... Sammy Crooks would be so proud if you well, did. Well, <laughs> it's a tradition we continue. Dean, thank you so much and I hope you get as much as you need this year. Thank you so much for being thank part of so our programme today. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dean Stephen Ford. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. OK. You know where he is. You know where he'll be over Christmas. A few bob will always be very welcome. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. See you then. Hi, I'm Stephen. I'm a music student up at Millfield and I created the theme song for Tonight with Jerry Kelly. After college, I would like to work as a composer in film and TV. Visit Antrim Town Centre and the award-winning Antrim Castle Gardens and make magical memories like never before. Embrace the giant Christmas spirit and experience the enchanted winter garden. Book your tickets at EnchantedWinterGarden.com Brought to you by Antrim and Newton Abbey Borough Council. Let the good times roll at Super Strikes at the Jet Centre. You can now book your lane online. We've got 14 bowling lanes and four mini bowling lanes. Plus, we serve delicious hot food and snacks. Discover bowling today at the Jet Centre. Jet Centre. Entertainment for everyone.
There is an unmissable new season of shows to enjoy at the Grand Opera House in 2023. From West End and Broadway musicals to thrilling drama and many more sensational productions. Book your tickets at goh.co.uk. Nestled in the Castle Ray Hills, you'll find Hillmount Garden Centre. Whether you're looking for winter plants to brighten your garden, a real Christmas tree or new Christmas decorations, you'll find it at Hillmount. Those gifts for all the family and gift vouchers for that one friend who's so difficult to buy for. There's everything from barbecues to pizza ovens and garden furniture. And you can shop these online too at hillmount.co.uk. After all the shopping, stop in at the Gardener's Rest and relax with a warming cuppa or enjoy a festive feast. Hillmount Garden Centre, Upper Braniel Road, Belfast. <laughs> Now, next Wednesday, the 21st of December, uh, my next guest will be winging his way along with over 100 terminally ill or life-threatened children to visit the real Santa Claus at his home in Lapland. He's Colin Barclay, who's the chairman of the Northern Ireland Children to Lapland and Days to Remember Trust. And this will be the charity's 12th year taking the children away. Now, I have to say at this stage, that I've a vested interest in this because I am the, the charity's president and I will be going as well with them. This will be our 12th year going indeed, Colin. Yep, 12th year. We're all, all set up and ready to go. Of course, we haven't been able to go for the last couple of years. Yes. Um, so we're looking forward to getting back to, to, to Rovani Emmy. It all started with a great friend of ours, Jack Rogers. Sadly, yeah. Jack died, what, just over three years ago? Just over three years ago. He started the charity in 2008. Yeah. Uh, he had heard about this type of thing happening, and he thought, well, why can't we do it? But he did. He talked to doctors and psychiatrists and psychologists, and they all said that for, for kids who are sick, for their families, that this would be a wonderful thing. Um, and, and that is it. It's a day for the families, not just the children. Yeah, so Jack set up a Northern Ireland one that yeah. we've sort of been heavily involved yeah. in. Uh, tell us about the children that, that, that we take. We, um, we give the hospital trusts a certain number of allocations and then they choose the children. So they know the illnesses and they have doctors and nurses coming with us. It's like a flying hospital. They've got all the medicines that are required. And these are, are terminally ill, life limited or deserving kids. Um, and we know that although we're going up in a week's time uh, and we've already got the, the allocation in, between now and next Wednesday, some of those kids will not be able to go. And that's how, how quickly things can deteriorate. So some of them are, are very, very sick. But yet you wouldn't know when you see them on the day because it smiles from start like to finish. It's the most magnificent day I think you and I are ever involved in. Yeah. As you say, it's all, it all sounds awful. It is one of the happiest mm -hmm. days mm -hmm. that you could imagine. Yeah. And all the stuff that's provided for them. Yeah, I mean, we have a party on the way out and with face painting and they write letters to Santa and then the way back with a, a, a seat decorating competition and the plane is just an absolute mess. Uh, but the cabin crew get involved and, you know, it's just, it's a very, very happy day um, despite the circumstances. And, and a lot of the parents are saying, you know, I haven't seen my son or daughter smile for, for months and look at them today. And it's a break. They see. They get to see Santa Claus. They get to see Santa now, there, there's Claus. There's a lot of things that we've got reindeer and we've got dogs, sleds, and yeah, we've so huskies, on. reindeer, scoo scoos, and whatever. But the big thing is getting to see Santa yeah. himself. He still is the He's major still the main man. Still even, the main Mrs. Man. even Mrs. Claus doesn't doesn't count as far as Santa's concerned. Yeah, Mrs. Claus. They bake gingerbread cakes with Mrs. Claus. They go to elf school. Um, there's ice sculptors. Some of the kids aren't well enough to go outside because the temperatures can be minus 15, minus 20 degrees. So it's an indoor centre, and but those that can go outside to get the reindeer and the huskies, that really makes it special. Everything's provided, even those that do go out, there's got the, we've got the suits and the boots yeah, and the yeah. gloves. The, the, there's fun. not a penny changes hands for the families for anything. Everything is paid for, the flights, the food on the flights, there's food in the resort. Or everything is paid for because we don't want them to have anything to worry about. Because a lot of these kids will never have been on a plane before. A lot of these kids can't get insurance to go away. So we look after all of that for them. So the, 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 the families can just go and have a, a day that they, they'll never forget. It costs us something like £100,000 a year to, yes, to, to yes. get it away. Uh, and to be fair, we have the money this year. 
because we didn't go last year. We set up an, another little scheme last year, yeah. uh, but we have the money this year. But we are dependent each year on, on the generosity yeah. of, of the public. Yeah, there's, there's no lottery funding or anything like that because travel's involved. We're very lucky. We have eight corporate partners who, who uh, donate regularly to us. Uh, but apart from that, then it's donations and fundraising events and, and, and people nominating us as their charity. Um, and so we, we just got to keep, we, as we say, we fundraise for 364 days of the year and then spend it all on the 365th. Well, look, we're going to have a great day on the we, 21st. We are. I'll see you there bright and early in the morning. Five o'clock at Belfast International Airport. And we'll say hello to Santa for all you people out there when we get there. All right. Tom Martin, ladies and gentlemen. See you on Wednesday. See you Wednesday. <laughs> Okay, so there we are. Where are you rushing away to? Sit down there for a moment. I don't know why you're leaving me because you'll know this next fellow oh, that right. I'm about to introduce. Uh, because uh, next year in 2023, this next guest of mine will see the 50th anniversary of his first appearance on television. You can go now and you can say hello to him on the way out because this man, he became the most respected and indeed the most authentic voice of football commentary in Northern Ireland. Would you please welcome the legend that is Jackie Fullerton. Hi, old friend. It's not easy anymore. It's not easy anymore, sure. No, it's not. Hey. Look at this. Look yeah. at this. Do you remember television, Jackie? Yeah. <laughs> when it was black and white. <laughs> uh, when you first came on UTV, uh, well, I was a wee fella at school. But when you first came on UTV, you were actually playing football at the time for Crusaders, were you not? Yeah, it was my last season and uh, I was reaching, at that stage, I was reaching 30. And at that stage in the Irish League, you were considered to be done when you reached 30. So I happened to meet uh, through Robin Walsh, who was the head of news at UTV. And uh, I get in to do a penalty prize competition on UTV. And uh, I met a fella that a lot of the audience will know, uh, Sidney Perry, who was the controller then. And uh, we went to the green room after a penalty prize competition. I think I finished second in it. And uh, we talked, and you know the usual thing in the green room, it's two minutes, hello, hello. And uh, we ended up talking for about 20 minutes because he was a cricket buff as I was, because yes. I played cricket as well. And God love me, must have been impressed because a uh, month later I was coming off the pitch at Seaview for Crusaders and Robin was there and Robin being Robin, he says, Jackie, Sydney's here, he would like to talk to you afterwards. And I says, oh, okay, right, I didn't know who Sydney was. And uh, he says, would you be interested in television uh, when we eventually got to talk? And I said, well, when I stopped playing, I would be keen on maybe writing for the Daily Mirror or the yeah. newsletter or whoever to keep me in football because I love that environment. And uh, he says, well, he says, uh, he says, I don't mean this to sound silly, but he says, you look, you look well, you could do well. <laughs> so I think, oh. So I goes in, does a screen test, had to write a report, deliver it to the camera, no auto cue, no words up there. You had to memorize it and go up and down and then a month later I got another edition but this time there was an interview at the end of it I had to interview somebody now at that time UTV had like three people on a Saturday who come in to sports gas and they did they said well I've been to the Oval today it was Glen Torn against Ards or whatever and they did a minute to camera and that was it but there were no interviews Gordon Burns who left to do the Krypton Factor, he was the presenter. So I thought that's strange. So I interviewed another footballer that day. Then I'm called up, cut a long story short, Jerry, you're, I know you're supposed to ask questions. <laughs> cut, long, <laughs> cut long story short, I get called up, Sidney says uh, blah, 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 and he says we watched that, and he says uh, we would like you to join the team. Now being as green as the grass, because I did accountancy in those days, knew nothing about the media, and I said, I had to say, what does that mean? And he says, we see you as the presenter of the programme. And I went, oh. 
and then he, he offered me four times what I was getting paid for football. So being a Bellamina man, it was a no-brainer. Yeah, I know. It was a no-brainer. It's a pity it never this worked out for you. This is great, by the way. It's a sellout. It's like one of my concerts. Yeah. <laughs> How easily did, did you fit into television? Oh, very nervy. As you remember, you came in shortly after me. You remember the, the trembly hand never with the mic? And never you forget. take it, Jerry. No, no, no. <laughs> you take it, Jack. <laughs> no, 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 you take it. Uh, I, I enjoyed being in front of the camera uh, and I took to it quite uh, readily. I, I think what, what helped me was I am also a singer, as you know, but I was... Really? <laughs> <laughs> One nil, Jerry. <laughs> we, uh, I was in a men's chorus and we linked up with a girls' choir and we did shows like... You couldn't do the black and white minstrels, for example, these days. And we were all made up in black faces, like Al Johnson. You did it then, yeah. Red coat, white trousers, white shoes. By the light, by the light. Of the silvery moon. I like to croon. With my honey at June. Love, June. Honeymoon. Honeymoon, oh, honeymoon. <laughs> Oh, showbiz, uh, this is showbiz, <laughs> this is showbiz. <laughs> so, sorry, interrupted you. And, uh, Your monologue, I, I interrupted this. that performing in front of a live audience at that time maybe helped, helped me yeah, a wee yeah, bit. Yeah. But it was difficult to get to talk to an inanimate object, the camera. Yeah. But i also never forget the great help that uh, I've already mentioned Robin Walsh who was my mentor. The late Derek Murray, who did the politics, he was my first producer. And I see my first PA here, Lynn Davidson. Yeah. Oh, yes, we were an item, we were an item. Were you? I, I never <laughs> knew that then. <laughs> I don't know what Anne Young's laughing at. She was... <laughs> We were close as well. Well, tell me this: there was, there was a time, there was a time. There was a rumor that when we both worked with Gloria Honeyford, that there was a wee thing between you and Gloria Honeyford. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not. Yes, I, I had. Quick story, true story. I was called in when these rumors were flying about. Jackie's doing a line, having an affair with Gloria Honeyford. So I was called in by Derek Murray, who was middle management at that time, and Jean Clark, who was a former PA, now in middle management. And I wondered what all this was about. And they said, there are, there's talk that you and Gloria are having an affair. And I smiled, and Derek says, what are you smiling at? I said, it's not true. And... Uh, a blind it, man in a galloping horse would have known that wasn't true, Jackie. <laughs> She was a lovely woman, mind you. Um, she was. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they went on. They said, just a minute, everybody's talking about it. It's out. The dogs in the street know about it. And they said, you're building a home together. <laughs> Gloria has left Don Keating, her husband. You have left Linda. And workmen have seen you there <laughs> looking at the building going up. It was bound a hinge for some reason. And people have seen her there. And I says, hang on. They says, what? I said, is it a nice place? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, this is serious. I said, it's not, because it's not true. And I says, Gloria's husband knows it's not true. As far as I'm concerned, I know it's not true. But more importantly, my wife knows it's not true. So, and if, what do you want me to do? Go down to the city hall with a... A megaphone say, I am not having an affair with Gloria Hannaford. Yeah, so that was. Yeah, you say, but, uh, that, you the, say that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the end of the story is I was at a Fullerton family party out in the country in Kells near Bellamina, and uh, a cousin of mine, Addy. And uh, Addy says, Jay, in his lovely Kells accent, he says, I want to ask you a question. I says, Go ahead. He says, are you down the line with that old thing, Honeyford? <laughs> and I says, Addy, I says, do you want the truth? He says, aye, that would be nice. I says, I'm not. And he, he looked at me and he says, I wait if 
<laughs> so, if your family doesn't believe you, Jerry, you have no <laughs> chance. <laughs> Jackie, stay on with us for a moment or two because uh, I have another old UTV friend who's going to join us. Uh, he's known not only for his unique, quirky way of introducing programmes on television, but he's also remembered for his Christmas version when he talked about the reindeers and Santa Claus flying their way across the world to come to see the children. <laughs> Would you give a big welcome, please, to the one and the only, Julian Simmons. <laughs> David. You know that man, you know that man, you know that man, you know that man. What a fairy how are you doing? Sit down. So you didn't have big sweaty lumbers with Gloria Hollyford up in the telex <laughs> from then? Uh, well, that's what I said in my book and what I'm telling people, but... You wrote a book? Or you coloured one in? What one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think you have a book, Jerry, have you? Oh, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right Julian, it's good to see you. Lovely to see you too. Do you know something? Especially around Christmas, we miss you in continuity. Do you miss doing the continuity? Of course I do. And, I mean, people stop me when I'm out shopping and all. At first, they always talk about me, and then they talk about you. They always say yeah, that... Yeah, nobody talks about Jackie. <laughs> oh, well, the, you're still looked on as a UTV person, even though you've worked for so many years at the BBC. Well, you're still looked on as a UTV. Julian, talk about me. All oh, right. <laughs> they talk about you, and then they talk about me, yes. yes. What do they say to you? Well, they say to me, why did I take myself off television? As if. And I said, nothing to do with me. I was made redundant by ITV, who've looked after us very well now but then they say to me and um, what why did the kelly show go yeah and of course i say it's nothing to do with me i didn't do it but the people do miss you yeah but uh, yes oh, jackie Julian, you're right Julian. Jackie, what? Jackie, you were always no you were always <laughs> jealous of me do you know that all yeah. you all you all your utv days no but you were jealous of me because i turned down the chat show i said no i don't want to do that <laughs> yeah <laughs> give, it, give it to your man give it to your man uh so what are you doing with yourself now, Julian? Well, I've just finished recording a programme for Christmas Day on Channel 5. Oh. And oh. It's, called, it's called The Best Christmas Telly Ever. And they have, they're having people on who have done Christmas Day work on television over the years. And the people from all around the network, uh, Ruth Langsford is one, and then they've got a whole section on UTV, me. Oh, brilliant. So that's, that's going to go out on Christmas Day. I don't know what it looks like. I've done it. And it, it, they say it looks like fun. I haven't seen it yet, but it's going out Christmas Day. But you always did the Christmas Day I thing, didn't you? I always was landed with it because I fitted in with my other job, you see. Which was? Air Canada of in course, Terminal of 3. But then you knew where Santa Claus was. Actually, I'd, yes, I had a hotline, you see. Yes. And I always knew what, and what, what way he was coming into Northern Ireland. And he always did us first, you see. Really? Yes, in those days, he always did us first. So I had to say to him, be in bed before half eight or you're getting nothing. <laughs> nah. Nothing. <laughs> Are you hearing this already? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, we've been friends for many, many years and I hope it continues for many, many, many more years to come. 50 odd years, yeah. 50 odd years, man. And Here's boy. to the next 50. Here's to the next yeah, 50 too, as well. Julian, thank you so much for having Thank me. you very Can much for having me on. Yours. Very happy Christmas. And we'll see, we'll see you all in the new year. And to you, big man. Thanks a million. Ladies and the fabulous Jackie Fulton. Thank, thank you. Julian Simmons. <laughs> that is, that's uh, almost it from uh, this. This is the final show of tonight with Jerry Kelly. My thanks wants to go to all the former colleagues at UTV. Uh, and to all the media students here at the college, good luck with the rest of your studies and I hope you've learned something from us old ones over the past eight weeks or so. And here's to the next series, eh? Finally, finally. Finally, but my thanks to you at home uh, for having tuned in over the past couple of months. All that remains is for us to wish you and yours a very happy Christmas and we leave you once again with a corda and this time it's the beautiful silent night from us all here to everybody at home. Happy Christmas everybody. Merry happy good. Christmas. Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas.